In this short video, I wanted to share some updates that I've recently made to my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that I just finished publishing today. I wanna to share what's new and what's next with the course, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Andrew Powell. This episode is also available as a blog post on Voitanos.io and as a podcast on Voitanos.show. Check out the description below the video for links to these other resources. Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to see future videos for the Microsoft 365 and Azure Pro developers. It's been a while since I updated you on what's going on with the course, and I thought that now was a great opportunity to do it because this week we just uh, published a refresh of complete refresh of two chapters uh, in one of the bundles of the course. So real quick, if you're not familiar with what this is, if you head over to our site, uh, go to the courses menu and select Mastering the SharePoint Framework, this page here has got all the information that you can need uh, about this course, what it is, different bundles, what you get with it, um, all of that stuff, tons of sample projects, uh, et cetera. Um, the course is available in three different bundles. There's a starter bundle, a fundamentals bundle, and an ultimate bundle. The changes that we just published uh, this week are two uh, completely re-recorded two chapters in the fundamentals bundle. Now, whichever bundle you get um, as you build up, you get access to, every, to more and more content. So the starter bundle, I recently re-recorded that and published everything late last year, a couple months ago. Um, and that is three hour, or sorry, three chapters uh, that are available. Um, that course is completely free. In fact, I've got links in the uh, description below where you can actually watch other videos um, that I've published to the YouTube channel uh, with all the content in the starter bundle if you wanna watch it there. Um, the fundamentals bundle is great for people who want to get started. It's great for people who don't know anything about the SharePoint framework and who really need to understand how to do all like the, the core stuff, building web parts, working with extensions, data access with the SharePoint REST API, Microsoft Graph, it's set working with React, all that stuff. Um, and then if you go to the ultimate bundle, you get more content, but you also get like these this interactive stuff as well, like access to a mastermind group, um, access to monthly office hours, Etc. So you get a, a lot more stuff with that. Um, you can learn more about this entire thing, what was actually updated or what what about the course. You can get all that from the site here. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time here. So I want to focus on what's new and you can go look at this whenever you like. So let me go. Let me show you what kind of changes uh, that I made to the course. Now, the best way to do this is probably just to go right into the course and show you the changes. So I'm going to go over here to uh, your library, which is um, I've already logged in, so it's giving me access to my uh, access to all the courses I have access to. Um, the starter bundle, those are the first three chapters that I, again, that I uh, completely re-recorded and refreshed and republished uh, late last year, a couple of months ago. Um, the fundamentals bundle is where the changes I've, that I've applied, the updated chapters uh, here inside of this bundle. So if I scroll down here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, what, you, what you'll see here that's changed are is these first two chapters. So it's the one about creating your very first SharePoint framework project and then digging into the SharePoint framework. The reason why I went through and updated these two chapters first is because these two chapters are the ones uh, that were probably the most dated. Um, a lot of stuff has changed since I originally published the course uh, over the last couple of years. I mean, I've been adding content to it the last couple of years. Um, the um, specifically around the, these two chapters, the the tool that we use to create new projects and uh, has changed a lot. Um, the uh, the the generator, the Yeoman generator for the SharePoint framework, um, the project structure has changed a lot. There's a lot of things that are no longer there that are there now, um, and vice versa. So I figured, you know, a lot of the changes that I intend to make to the course um, over time, uh, I'm going to come back and. Um, uh, refresh those throughout the course, throughout the different uh, chapters and courses as necessary. But these two chapters, they needed a complete redo. So I went through and completely re-recorded these guys. Um, there's some features that I've added to the, the, the viewership, the consumption of the content as well, that I think that you'll really enjoy. Um, these are only going to apply to the to the chapters that I've updated. And I'll show you in a second how you can actually see like where those different updates are. So it's these first two chapters. And if I come over here and just look at this first overview, this overview lesson, it's got a, I've got the sound muted so that you're not going to hear me talking uh, over myself. Um, but the animations have been refreshed. Things are a lot cleaner. They're a lot less like sterile. Um, there's a little bit more engagement to the videos. So it's, it, it's harder to get bored or harder to get distracted. 
um, where I try and do a lot more, a lot less of work with like slides and a lot more time uh, with me trying to teach you, showing you things and explaining stuff. So you saw one little technique there where the video kind of jumps around a little bit just to have a different perspective on the camera. Um, let me come over here to uh, the second lesson, though, because this one's got some really good stuff in it that I want to highlight. So a couple things I want to highlight with this is that first, if you come over here, you'll notice that I've got these different chapter links here at the bottom uh, of the video. So if I, when the video loads, it will open up these chapter links. But what this does is it allows me to jump to different sections in the video um, if I know that I'm looking for something in particular. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time using this as a reference to just do like deep links, jumping into different areas uh, to be able to, to find the content that you're looking for. Um, another thing you're going to notice, too, is that you see here with this little animation going with the slide, I've tried to get away from traditional like PowerPoint slides and focus more on demos and just using a slide for like annotating something that I want to say or, or kind of augmenting something. So like over here, if I go to like this one about creating a SharePoint framework project, or actually let me back up a little bit farther, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have sometimes we'll have like a full cover over slide like this. Um, but the idea is, is to be able to, to just, you know, focus on the content, focus on the demos. And so that's why you see like these animations and stuff popping up here. Those links though, those chapter links, I've got those throughout all the different lessons. They, I used them in the past, but I didn't use them as gratuitously as I'm using them now because I figured out a way to go through and to automate the um, inclusion of them as I'm uh, as I'm producing the course. Another thing that's really cool about this, too, that is a big change from what I used to do is if I jump over to I believe it's right about the two minute, five second mark. Yeah, there we go. So let me pause this for a second. Um, there's something that I reference like in this chapter, I'm referencing an external uh, another link somewhere else. And before all of the all of the lessons you had to you had to um, wait for a little thing to pop up on the screen and it would show a link that you would then have to like then go copy down separately. You couldn't copy the link from the from the video. It was actually part of the video it wasn't clickable. Uh, and second of all, if like a, a link changed, it was hard for me to go back, go in and change those links at a future date. If something got uh, some URL got expired or broken. Not anymore, though, because what's cool about this is that these are actually real links. So I can go, I can hover over this link that shows up at the top. And if I click on it, it opens up in another tab. In this case, I'm using it as a way to cross reference between different chapters. Um, but I use it in a lot of different places to like say for, you know, Microsoft documentation and uh, resources in different places. Um, but furthermore, all of the links that you'll see that are listed here are also going to show up down here in the lesson notes. So you see here this one about uh, a lesson in the uh, the fundamentals bundle um, about digging into the SharePoint framework that you can take this. You'll be able to just to jump over uh, straight into that link to be able to uh, have access to that like somewhere else. So that's a that's a nice uh, refresh, a nice change um, because it's easy. You can see the links that are in the course, both in the lesson notes. So if you want to like just right click and copy that link or if you want to click on it from down here or if you want to click up from inside the video. So just a couple different ways you can do it. A lot easier for me to maintain it. Another thing that I did um, that is that is also really going to be a, a nice feature for the course consumption uh, piece is um, all of the lesson notes are dynamically generated. So what that means is that they're they're all dynamically generated. They're all published when I uh, make updates to the course. And when the when the page loads to watch your lesson, it's going to automatically go fetch those notes from um, that I'm storing somewhere. Now, in the past, I had to go into every single lesson, take my notes, convert them over to HTML and then go into each each page on the site where the lessons are and copy and paste my lesson notes. in. it was very tedious. Uh, it took a lot of time. Um, and frankly, it was one of the things that held me up from doing a bunch of updates. Now that these things are dynamic. It's much cleaner, much faster. And you can also see that there's a change log at the bottom of every single lesson where you can um, see the latest things that have actually um, uh, been updated. Uh, another thing that I wanted to highlight here, too, is if I go back to the the actual chapter, the roll up part of the chapter, um, if you scroll down here on the right hand side. So as always, since the very beginning, you've been able to download the course materials for the bundle that you're in. So in this case here, we'd be downloading the bundles for the for the fundamentals bundle. 
Um, that's going to have all of the projects that I demo throughout the entire course. What got updated for the fundamentals bundle this time is the 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 demos for the first two chapters have been refreshed to the latest version of the SharePoint framework, which right now is 1.14. Um, the ultimate bundle didn't get updated. Uh, I'm just focusing. I just focused on the fundamentals bundle um, in this most recent update. And then another thing you can do is if you ever want to see like kind of you know what happened and what the history is of all the changes uh, for the course, you can always go in and use this, like get the uh, the course updates. That's gonna be available to you. That link wasn't there before I made this update, but it's now it's there now uh, to where you can go in to our main, our public site, and you can see a list of all, a history of all the changes that I've made to the course and as they were made and stuff. So here, the fundamentals course that we just updated uh, in the last couple of days, um, completely re-recorded two chapters, refreshed the solutions um, in these chapters to SPFX 1.14. And it was the two chapters, your first SharePoint framework project and dig into the SharePoint framework. So those are some of the really big updates um, that I've made to the course. Oh, another thing too, that's gonna be a nice, that'll be nice is that all of the new content that I've updated is if you take a note of it, notice where it says the quality is 720 everything has been recorded to 1080. So we got a much higher res um, of the recording that's available to you. So everything is a lot crisper, a lot clearer uh, for you to be able to, to see that stuff. I've, I previously have recorded everything in 720p um, and that's how the rest of the course is. But as I'm doing new stuff, it'll be done in uh, 1080p. So that's a nice little feature with that. So you might be wondering, What's next? What am I working on next with the course? Well, let me give you a little bit of a sneak peek on what I'm what I'm thinking about here. I'd love to get your input on the changes that I'm working on. Best way to do that, drop a comment below the video. All right, so let me come over here and let me show you my list of all the changes that we've got. This is my master list that I'm using to keep track of everything that I've seen as like a, an update or a change that I need to make to the course, et cetera. Um, if I come over here and let's look at the open items, things I haven't done yet. Um, I got a bunch of global stuff that I'm going to do, like anywhere I'm referencing the Office 365 CLI. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. It's now the CLI for Microsoft 365. There's some changes with it. So I've got a bunch of global changes I'm making across the entire course. Anywhere that I'm using the old CLI, use the new one. Um, any links that are um, that I'm used that I use throughout the course, make sure those are actually referenced in the notes. Uh, as well, so that they'll be um, there's something you can click on. You don't just see them show up in the in the in the site. Updating on the thumbnails, re-recording the overviews, etc. In fact, the overview for the first for these two lessons in the fundamentals bundle, um, I've published those as videos. I'll give you a link to those. Um, there's a link in the description uh, below the video, but there's also I'll show those at the end as well uh, if you want to see like what what's in these two chapters. Um, but some of the stuff, other stuff that I've done here um, that I plan on making changes to, like I got, this is the chapter dealing with web parts, um, changes that I plan making to um, to those. Um, I've got a list of uh, changes, advanced web parts, so adding lessons for adaptive cards and uh, adaptive card extensions, ACEs for Viva connections, um, et cetera. Um, and I've got everything kind of prioritized on like things that I have to do, things that require an entirely re-record of a lesson, um, things that just really need to be like, there's some annotations that I need to add to the video, stuff like that. Um, not stuff I need to do a complete re-record, or maybe I can just get away with a partial re-record, uh, things like that. So those are a bunch of the updates that I want to, um, that I want to add. Um, I've got, a, you know, things like extensions, that extensions chapter, pretty good chance that whole thing is going to get redone, um, because it's got, um, uh, a lot of changes to, the, at least the, the one part that'll definitely get re-recorded is the um, command set extensions because the APIs have changed uh, and they're much, much more robust in terms of event management or, or in finding out context about the current list that you're on. So a bunch of things here. React's going to get updated so that I have a, a lesson on hooks instead of using just the hierarchy components, et cetera. So a bunch of stuff that's planned. You can see all this list of stuff that's there. I've been collecting this information, you know, what I think needs to be updated for quite a while. Um, got some feedback from people about it as well. And as people leave me um, uh, notes throughout the course and saying, hey, there's an issue here, an issue here, 
you know, I go through and I, I take a look at those things and I make sure that they get updated or they're logged and then I'll up and I make sure that they all, will all get updated. A lot of the changes that I made in this update, my intention in a lot of these changes was to change up my my production workflow so that I can I can record, produce and ship an update much, much faster than I could in the past. And that's a lot of the uh, a lot of the automation stuff that I did was really investments to make this easier. So you see anything here that you think needs to get done that's more important than others? The next chapter I'm probably going to work on first is like the web parts chapter and then the extensions chapter. And then from there, there's a list of a bunch of ones that I want to work on. But give me your input. What, what do you think should be there? If you're if you're not a, if you're not a student of the course and something's holding you back uh, that you don't see listed in the agenda or that is still missing. Let me know. You can have an influence on what I'm going to work on, because if it gets somebody else to sign up for the course, that's probably going to take a, a pretty good priority there. Um, speaking of that, too, uh, when it comes to the course, um, make sure you check the description of this video because I've got a, a special discount that I'm going to give you off the course. But heads up, I'm only running this discount for a limited time, just for about a week or so. So don't put it off if you're interested. Uh, make sure you take advantage of that. And the, the, when you sign up for the course, it's one time payment, get access to it for life, and you get access to all the future updates um, as well. So what do you think about these updates? Nice improvements to the course? Let me know by dropping a comment below the video. I'm really looking forward to refreshing uh, additional lessons uh, with other chapters and with some of these same content updates um, that I just refreshed in these last two chapters. Now, if you like this video, make sure that you like it in YouTube and subscribe to my channel to get more Microsoft 365 and Azure Pro Developer videos in the future. And hey, I've included links to the overview lessons in each of these two new chapters that I just refreshed in case you want to check them out. Hey, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.